Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the dot product. We start with two vectors in Rn, two vectors of the same dimension. Let's call them a and b, and let's call their components a1 up to an and b1 up to bn. The dot product of a and b, written a dot b, is a1 b1 plus a2 b2, and so on. So you're multiplying the corresponding components of the vectors and then adding up all those results. For instance, 2 comma negative 1 dotted with 4 comma 3 is 2 times 4 plus negative 1 times 3, or 5. Notice that the result of the dot product of two vectors is a scalar. Sometimes we call the dot product the scalar product for that reason. 3, 0, 0, negative 1 dot negative 2, 4, 1, 0. You're going to multiply the corresponding components, add up the results, and in this case, you get negative 6. One more example, 1, 7, 4 dotted with negative 6, 2, negative 2. Multiply the corresponding components, add up the results, simplify, and you get 0. Notice here that the dot product of those two vectors was 0, even though neither one of the factors was 0. This is different than with the real numbers, for example, where if you have a product that's equal to 0, one of the factors has to be 0. The dot product does have many of the same properties, however, as the multiplication of real numbers. Here's a few of them. First of all, the dot product is commutative. a dot b is always b dot a. It distributes a dot b plus c is a dot b plus a dot c. And the order doesn't matter when you're doing multiplication of scalars. k times a dotted with b is the same as k times a dot b, which is the same as a dotted with k times b. So you can multiply the scalar in whichever step you like. Finally, 0 dot a is always equal to 0 for any vector a. By the way, notice that the zeros on each side of this equation represent different sorts of things. On the left, we have the n-dimensional 0 vector, 0, 0, 0, and so on. On the right, we just have the number 0, the scalar value. Let's throw in one additional property while we're at it. If you dot a vector with itself, the scalar value you're going to get back is going to be the square of the length of that vector. This property, as well as all of the other four, can be verified just by writing out the, the vector using its components and then applying the definition of the dot product. They're all very short proofs. One very important thing about the dot product is that it can be used to measure the angle between two vectors. If you have any two vectors, a and b and rn, then a dot b is the length of a times the length of b times the cosine of the angle between them. This can be proved using the law of cosines. It's a good exercise in trigonometry. I'm not going to run through it right here. If neither the length of a nor the length of b is 0, then we can divide both sides of that equation by length of a times the length of b, and then take inverse cosines of both sides to solve this thing for theta. Here's the formula we get. Cosine inverse of a dot b over the length of a times the length of a. That's going to give you the angle between these two vectors. Now, since we've taken inverse cosines of both sides, the result is always going to be between 0 and pi. And therefore, when measured in this way, that theta is always going to be the smallest angle between those two vectors. For example, find the angle between 6, negative 1, 0 and 2, negative 2, 2. Here we're just plugging into our formula. Here's the formula. I take out a and replace it with its components, 6, negative 1, 0. I take out b and replace it with its components, 2, negative 2, 2. Simplify. Apply the inverse cosine. And I get about 0.844 radians, about 48.4 degrees. Let's look back at this original formula one more time. a dot b is the length of a times the length of b cosine theta. First of all, notice that if a and b are both unit vectors, then the dot product is just giving you back the cosine of the angle between them. Second of all, 
notice that um, the right hand side is going to be 0 exactly when the angle between the two vectors is pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 or some coterminal angle with that. In other words, when the two vectors are orthogonal or in Rn that means just perpendicular. So the dot product is giving us a very easy, efficient, and reliable way of determining when two vectors in Rn are orthogonal. We just ask, is their dot product zero? Let's do a couple of examples using that. Which of these following pairs of vectors are orthogonal? So here's two that we saw earlier, 3, 0, 0, negative 1, and negative 2, 4, 1, 0. We take their dot product, we get negative 6, we saw that before. So these vectors are not orthogonal. x equals 4, comma, negative 1, y equals 2, comma, 8. We take the dot product and we get 0. We get 8 minus 8. So these vectors are orthogonal. Let's draw these vectors um, in the plane. Here, x equals 4, comma, negative 1 is on the lower right and y equals 2 comma 8 is um, drawn more vertically. Clearly, you can see that the angle between them is 90 degrees. These vectors are orthogonal, just as we saw from the dot product. 